the following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 now john logan hi guys welcome back to the show we're gonna get right into the s and p's here and the uh some news out of greece for what that's worth i don't know why but the market's just looking seemingly for a reason to go up um Bad news kind of goes sideways, and good news obviously spikes up. And yesterday, <clears throat> we hit within a half a tick, half a point, um, that you know, wait and patiently close above, retest that 2052, 2053 area. It reached a low yesterday of eh, 2053, 25, and the unfair highs in that box are 2052, 82, so half a point, whatever. Um, and that's really a good lesson. You know, we talked about, you know, this thing had kind of run up pretty good, but it was also not a bad idea to eliminate the short side of the market uh, tone, if you will, and just kind of focus on the long side and focus on breakouts and retest and find support on the S&Ps. Now, we had, you know, a couple of weeks ago started talking about this divergence that it started showing itself. But as we kind of move through time here and looked at this navigator, just really, I mean, I haven't seen this in a long time, actually, of just staying on the zero line. That kind of negated the divergence that it showed itself, which it actually allowed us to get into some some short trades on breadth after that. And when I say breadth after that, I mean, you know, basically looking at these dials here that we talk about and looking at some of these crossovers. Got some really, really cool automated systems to show you guys today, by the way. Um, and, you know, focus on the the last little bit here at we kind of rattled around and uh brett that stayed positive on our long-term weekly but we had been kind of rattling around on the daily and providing some opportunities but when we started blowing north again on february 2nd um, you really kind of had to look at everything from the long side again even on the intermediate basis so what does this do this provides some form of looking at our daily breadth intermediate trading opportunities while looking at the long side the ultra long side Ultra, ultra long term site. Um, this is kind of our situation. And uh, we've talked about this before, but just wanted to reiterate. And actually, the weeklies are widening here. So not a not a good situation if you're short. And um, it might be best to just sit tight right now and pick your battles uh, on another day in a, and on another level, so to speak. So right now, what do you do? So on the S&Ps, we always talk about you know what's happened in the past, and then we try to figure out what do we do moving forward. Well, this is a, a pretty hot shot situation here, 2071.75, unfair highs on the weekly. And this is a situation where we've talked about things on their highs want to go higher, um, and you can't step in the way of a train, especially when we start getting near these – recent unfair highs and you know people talk about double tops triple tops all that you know the classical technical analysis patterns those usually break people's backs these days um and you know souls or whatever you want to call it because when they when they go near these areas they usually flush some people out at the very least if not fo even following through so watch out for that if you're kind of playing that classical technical analysis scene uh on a double top um just kind of shorters beware if you will um, 2071 2075 is going to be somewhat support here right now, um, as 2052, 2053 was before. If we get a weekly close, I know I've, I hate to, I, I hate to say that word if, but I'm just going to use it one more time. If we can get tomorrow a weekly close above 2071 that number on the weekly, that is very bullish um you know it's there's no other way to look at that any any of you guys who are hanging on the shorts you, you, you might just want to sit tight here because you know the good news is if, if you're looking at everything from the short side and 
and I, I'm assuming you guys are playing that scene for a little bit longer move or or, or greater move, better move, whatever. Y- you will have a chance to get back in, and you know, saying, "Okay, well, oh God, we pulled back ten points, and I got out, and Logan said, sit on the sidelines, blah blah blah." In the grand scheme of things, ten ten points is really um, not a deal breaker. Um, and right now, this thing could go up another hundred points before it, you know, it provides some new leverage. So your leverage right now on the short side is twenty seventy one fifty, and then actually getting back down below twenty fifty two eighty two twenty fifty three. Um, so again, the longs are in control right now. There's that's indisputable on many levels. Uh, now that's not saying the market couldn't turn. I mean, I'm, you know, when these things happen, the the problem is, is as you know, a lot of times when these things happen, if you're not in it, you can't win it because one morning we're going to walk in and, and the Dow's going to be gapping down 400 points, and that's just the way this works. They're not they're not letting anybody get a free lunch um, on the long side usually, which they've had have done the past five or six years. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I said they. They don't let anybody get a free lunch now. They'll look back on it. But, you know, th- that's just the way things go. I mean, like, you know, sometimes there's there's going to be an event. You've got, you've got to put your stops in. I guess that's the theme of what I'm trying to say. And, you know, the shorts will have their day. But right now, um, you know, even if we gap down and you're like, oh, Jesus Christ, I wasn't in the trade, you'll still have opportunities. Um but playing the game and, and possibly hanging on for a while is, is it might you know might might be a little more uh, risk relative to reward right now. <sighs> Hope I didn't confuse anybody. The leverage is towards the long term investor right is in the long term investors camp on the long side, and uh, again, like I said at the beginning of the conversation, shortest beware right now. Let's take a look at the Nasdaq. And by the way, I mean, you know, I'm one of the most jaded people out there. And, I, you know, I think that there's, you know, probably a big shell game going on with our economic reports and everything else. And the general population not exactly participating in these rallies. Um, but that being said, I'm also a trader. And as a trader, I have to take this for what it's worth. And based on everything I just said, that's kind of the way you got to take it. Um Here's the NASDAQ, and we don't see any new profiles appearing, no new boxes. And by the way, I'm going to pull up our scanner really quick. And let me, let me just refresh this here. I had it up forever. Um, and as we pull this back up, and what, what I've got preset here is the generic currencies, futures, and ETFs at the bottom. And why I'm doing that is I'm going to go to our NASDAQ, and somebody had asked me, if there are any new boxes attempting to appear on the NASDAQ. And as you can see, we don't have any yellow or orange cells here appearing. So that means that we do not have any new profiles attempting to appear. Here is where the multi time frame inflection points that you can view here are 4306.70, unfair highs on our 240. There's that 4210 that we've been talking about. And uh, that's the. Uh, just to kind of give you the, the the quick and skinny on the on the numbers here. So there's that 4210 launching pad that we talked about the other day, and that was beginning of the week. We said, you know, the Nasdaq's looking stronger, and the S and P's are uh, not yet crossing the border, but the Nasdaq is finding support in a stronger way. Apple obviously is helping this tremendously. I don't have to tell you that. And then you know we kind of use that as a launching pad to move forward and stops. The, the good news is the stops can be oriented around situations like that. Um, and that's kind of what I really like to do from a from my personal trading standpoint is, you know, where do I say uncle? I, I, hey, this thing could go up forever and it could go down forever. But, you know, how do I lose a little, lose a little, lose a little, make a lot? Well, this is, again, a good example of that. So that's the situation on the NASDAQ. Somebody had asked me about natural gas. Oh my God! How did I do that? Let me get my screen back straight here. Well, guys, we'll be right back. I know the break's coming up, and I've messed my screen up here, so let me get that straightened out, and then we will pick it back up in a couple of minutes. And let me see if I got my clock right here. 
Okay, we got three minutes left. Start left. Sorry about that. I was looking at uh, Tom's schedule here. Let me get my screen right. And we'll take a look at natural gas. And I think we're back in business here. So let me go down and not screw this up again. Let me pull up March natural gas. All right, here we go. So uh, as we look at the scanner, there's natural gas, All right? So as we look at this, we do see a, a, a a yellow or orange cell there and we're looking at March natural gas and that's what it says right there it gives you the contract and everything and I know I've been promising you guys charts other than landscape charts and those are being feverishly worked on along with putting the paragraph in so thanks for uh, being patient on that but as you can see we've got a new profile attempting to appear and by tomorrow's close if this is still yellow we will have some new inflection points to pay attention to which is a new demand area on natural gas that's the kind of way we're looking at this so here's the weekly there's that orange bar um you know haven't had any divergences on this on navigator versus price action and i'm again simplistically putting this into looking at two or three indicators exclusively all the time. We've got about 15 that we have. Um, again, I think less is more. A lot of times when it comes to indicators, Tom was actually pointing out something very, very important yesterday on his show, which was the 50-day moving average, keeping it simple, and um, what John Murphy had said you know, about <laughs> using one thing and following it. And it's going to have some you know, volatility and things like that, but over time, using that one simplistic indicator, you will win over time. Um, and I'm a big fan of, of, of that and what he said. Here's the situation on natural gas, though. The daily inflection point is 28.16. We've got a new profile attempting to appear. Um, you know, where do we go from here? You've obviously got an inflection point to pay attention to. I've not, a bit, uh, I've not been a big fan of buying natural gas at all. Um, and I think, to be honest with you, this inflection point right here, if we get back down below it, obviously that's not going to be good, but we're sitting above it right now. We've rallied what? Eh, what is that in percentage terms? Okay, that low was 20. Uh, what did we reach a high today of? 26. Okay. So what have we rallied over 10%? I tell you what, we're going to talk about that a little bit more when we come back after break. I hear the music, and we'll be right back. with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75 5% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30 day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Check out the new look of Tiger TV. Now you can see all hosts, charts, and computer screens live in high definition. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. Now, crystal clear in high definition, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you haven't seen the new look of Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days, and will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we were talking about natural gas and you know, again, there are long opportunities on natural gas without question. I was specific, and people have different time horizons that they're looking at things on. Now, I'm looking at some of these trades from a little bit longer time horizon and from the very long, longer term. And I'm showing natural gas on a daily. I mean, we, we have, you know, we started breaking down below profiles uh, on the weekly and daily. And, and, you know, recently the breakdown was below f around four, four bucks. Um, and we haven't had a lot of reasons on a longer to intermediate term basis to really consider that the tone has changed. But on the very short term, absolutely, there have been run-ups. Uh, but we've met those short-term run-ups, as you can see, with resistance. And you know, right now, um, how do you, how would I on the time frame I'm looking at it on, and I'm I'm actually liking that it rallied because it gives, believe it or not. Um, another opportunity possibly to look at this from the time frame I'm looking at it from. And that's uh, 2018, excuse me, 2.816. Um, and then you've got an unfair high at around three. Uh, so again, this is, you know, where I'm trying, you know, I'm not trading natural gas. I want to make that clear. But I'm just kind of stepping back and objectively looking at it from a, from a time frame that I like to look at which is a little bit longer and looking at um the most powerful inflection points the unfair lows and unfair highs so picking a battle here from the short side and then also picking a battle here from the short side is probably in order still on that time frame now what's happening now is if we can get a daily close above on the shorter term time frames above 2816 then that's going to provide an opportunity. And by the way, if you're trading on shorter time frames, looking at natural gas, we have had some breakage of profiles, namely on the shorter term time frames back in, you know, this was a heck of a move. Uh, 
2842 up into 330. Uh, but again, why, why was this cool back then? There's 330, and there's the top of the box, a very wide box, which is very important that most of the time they're not broken through when they develop very widely. And this was this was outputted a lot farther ahead of time. There's the you know the general 330 neighborhood. And by the way, guess what? We had the daily inflection point enforced there that we hit almost to the tick 32.99. So um, again, you know the shorter term there are opportunities, but you know these longer term lids, if you will, have proved and provided a little bit more you know longer term guidance on the thing. Um, you know, in my opinion, closes above three dollars uh, a natural gas unit here is going to provide the first technical damage as it stands right now. Now, we could have another profile traips a little lower, and then that technical damage would actually happen a little bit lower. Um, but right now, today is actually a really significant um, situation on natural gas. We, we really need to see where this thing is going to close. Um, so that's the uh, situation. And here's uh, the 240 situation. Again, we got a wide profile just like we had before. And this will provide at least somewhat resistance on uh, natural gas in the, sh in the very short term. Okay. Everything we're talking about uh, energy products. So let me pull up crude oil here. Sorry about that. And, you know, we talked about crude oil and trying to buy the 5104 and that didn't work out. It's actually, it's worked out before and we got some great breakouts, especially trading back in profiles and above profiles. Got a big wide profile here and we talked about, you know, where's the leverage now? In my opinion, you still got the leverage. Again, we showed some technical damage and I think crude oil, you know, provided some good opportunities. We didn't call it to the bottom the other day, but we started looking at this with suspect eyes again from shorting lower lows, higher lows here uh, on Navigator versus price action. But uh, 5104, we're going to have to have a close above there again to get back in, in the ball game. But, you know, we talked about this possibly compressing here and consolidating, maybe not above 5104, but uh, right now, you know, I don't think it's, you know, you don't have a lot to hang on to down here. There's not a lot to lean against from the long side. But a breakout above 5104 would provide some kind of leverage here uh, on the March contract. And uh, here's the 240 situation. So, you know, what do you do now? I think you just sit tight with crude oil. And uh, I've been a big fan of buying the XLE. I'm still, the, still a big fan of that on a relative strength basis. We'll be right back, folks. We'll get into some stocks in the news here. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool taking something that's good for you something specifically formulated to help with weight loss better sleep stress reduction and the need to detox nico our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment but today our food sources no longer contain the vitamins minerals and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong that's why we need primal edge daily nutrition it includes a special blend of ionic soil-based vitamins minerals fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form primal edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. And <laughs> we were uh, talking about crude oil. And I got away from that on my chart. Let me go back to what I was looking at Gilead. Um, again, you know, just the, the bottom line is just to finish this conversation, we need to kind of get back above 5104. And uh, if we pull back into these lower inflection points, 4465 on this daily box, and I feel like that's going to be very, very troublesome, and we're probably going to shoot through the lows. So right now, it's kind of a sit tight. I think the the leverage and the and the, the good odds are to wait for breakouts on the upside and not mess around with this uh, situation within the profiles down here. All righty. And uh, somebody was just stating, like, you know, there's different ways to look at things. And I, I think that was a great statement that uh, somebody in the den made a while ago about, you know, they've been kind of making money on the long side on natural gas. Um and I've been looking at it totally from the short side, but we, we're looking at two different time horizons to trade that on. And that's one of the, you know, again, this is, this is so cool to talk about this stuff because, you know, in a prop environment, which I'm extremely well versed in, and we've got our own traders, um, you know, we don't want everybody trading the same way because therefore the firm actually has a lot of risk because it's, if everybody's trading the same way and the boat rocks one way and everybody, everybody falls out of the boat, the firm firm kind of has problems um, a, a, as a whole. So we don't allow, um, you know, that type of scenario to happen. And when I say that, we actually also, at the end of the day, look at, you know, is the firm – over leveraged towards the long side, even on tons of different instruments or whatever, or the short side. And you can look at that and buy insurance for the firm. You can actually 
there's what's called flex options that they'll actually create for you on the floor in a flex market. You guys might not have heard about this, but and again, they're not going to they're not going to do it for you know. I mean, they'll do it if they if there's money in it. There's no question about it. But they'll create certain option scenarios for custom situations that are off market, um, and that means that okay, Logan, you want to <coughs> hedge your firm. And buy puts for a 24-hour time frame, and take it off the next day because you wanted to cover overnight risk because the firm was overloaded towards the short side. They'll, they'll they're basically taking the other side of the bet. It's almost like you know a Nadex situation or whatever. So they'll create markets for situations like that. But I guess going back to what I was trying to say is, you know, some traders do much better scalping. And being flat at the end of the day, some traders do better having to, um, you know, be in longer term situations that aren't as, you know, hen pecky kind of uh, stressful. And, you know, those people kind of figure that, you know, those traders figure that out after a while. Like, what are they, what is their forte? And, you know, that's where they should stay in that arena. Because that's their comfort zone, and obviously, you know, some guys who are trading natural gas or whatever on a shorter term time frame, that's their comfort zone. Now, I mean, me personally, I, I, I have a hard. I mean, this is again just my personal view. I have a hard time being long or short stocks overnight. I'm terrified because I know they can gap up or gap down, and and I can't get in or out of them. And there's some news related thing, and I, that's from a from being a and from having a commodities background and. You know, a futures background, an options background. You'd think that I, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I'd maybe think stocks are like trading, you know, kindergarten tools or whatever. But because of the twenty-four hourness of the, you know, non-stock markets, that's where I feel comfortable because I know I can put stops in, and even with slippage and everything else, at least, you know, in a catastrophic situation, I'm electronically going to get out. Now, if you know, the other day, if we're short. Uh, what was that Netflix? Yeah, Netflix just went up past 400. Let me just pull that up really quick. And we're just chatting today. Let me pull this up just to make sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so uh, okay, we, we did we didn't we ignored the close above profiles there, and we decided to stay short because we thought Netflix was going to have bad information. That's uh. That's nuclear, you know, to your account if you're if you're if you've got a decent sized position short there. And in the futures market, um, that's you know really that can happen too. But you know, at least you can get some sl high slippage and and uh, have some stocks. Excuse me, be able to get out of those markets. I was looking at Michelle Caruso Cabrera on CNBC, and it's like, man, that that lady's. Uh... <laughs> we were. Um... And the reason, uh, you know, if you, I don't know if you guys have, have watched uh, Best in Show. There was a, and we were talking about crude oil and natural gas, and I was thinking about oil platforms. And then Michelle's face came up. They had a somebody, somebody on. There was a, there's a great line in that movie where they said, uh, and they weren't being very nice to a lady when they said this. They said she could be a, a cocktail waitress on an oil platform, as if. Uh, you know, she needed to be very pretty to, to be a cocktail waitress, waitress on an oil platform. But that's for some reason I thought of that when Michelle's face came up. Um, so as we look at Netflix, we're going to move right into a couple of other a couple of other stocks here. Yeah, best in show. That, that's that's a funny movie. Uninine twenty one on on Gilead. So. You know, there's been some talk. You know, people are still out there thinking this is a great company. They had some obviously a, a, a an event that ratcheted the stock down, but we closed back in profiles. So if you're going to go long Gilead, I think you've got a decent fence here now. <clears throat> we're trading 170 pre market, so we're trading a little bit higher. Now you've got a fence. We've got back in the fair auction. We may start exploring this more, but um, if you want to play around with this, at least you've got a. 99.21 unfair low here that you can orient stops around and again the lose a little lose a little lose a little make a lot um this may kind of elevate higher we've kind of broken some ground here uh from the congestion that happened after the sell-off so again 
this may not be a bad situation to put some risk on when it comes to, you know, lose a little, lose a little, lose a little, make a lot on Gilead. Let's take a look at Facebook also. You know, Facebook is, is on this is a long term, this is our weekly. You know, we got above, we got a kind of breakout. This was a couple of months ago. The 70, 7896. On the weekly, we had a close above. We kind of popped around there, but then we had the market, you know, not really helped us and get into a very volatile state. Um, and we always talk about stops. So stops below there were in order. And then we, on a long term basis, you had some great trading opportunities that came around coming back into long term support around 73.48. And we powered up 76.51 at this stage. Here's the daily. Um, and as we were coming down off of those highs and crossing some borders, you know, what do you do now? Um, you got 7476 sitting down here on the daily on for lows, and you've got 7348 on the weekly on for lows. And some guys were asking about this. And I think, you know, you just kind of sit tight with Facebook. Um, that's where you can orient stops below uh, 7456, 7348. And I wasn't, by the way, a while ago saying Michelle Caruso Cabrera's looks like an cocktail waitress on a whole platform i was she just didn't look like she normally looked uh today and i was um just throw that out there just as a joke um so let's probably get a call from cnbc now here we go so that's the that's the deal on facebook on the long-term view uh as we look around at some other stocks that are in the news cbs we will take a look at this you know with the uh God, is that Brian Williams Williams thing wild or what? Whew. I mean, how, how many stories has he been embellishing? But you know what? Who cares? I mean, it's news. I mean, it's 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 his personal experience. I wouldn't call that something that swayed. You know, it's not, it's you know, those are personal experiences, and if he embellishes them, it's not that big of a deal to me. But uh, it's not like he reported that. We didn't invade Iraq or something like that. I mean, this is kind of a kind of a, not a big deal to me. So CBS Corp, I was thinking we might get a couple of bounces based on that fundamental news. But if you're trading this and we've got an earnings situation here on CBS, uh, we're trading 57.27 pre-market. The unfair highs on the weekly are 56.44. So that's going to be where you can orient stops on CBS. And I think this thing may continue to climb. Uh, it's kind of been really outperforming market conditions lately in a very calm, nice way. So that's the situation on CBS, and uh, that's that was a Brian Williams relativity trade. I think he, you know what I heard. I heard he went from I want to say like the top ten most believable people on TV to I mean something like number eight hundred and some, and that was actually below the guy from. Oh, was it uh, Duck Dynasty? As if the main guy on Duck Dynasty is more believable than him now, which is quite amazing. Here we go. We got to look at uh, the euro really quick. This thing is has really reversed uh, on the short term, and let's just let's just kind of glance at it, and then let's go back into the dollar. So. You know, we have we have been trailing around consolidating down there and it looked like we were gonna make another leg down. Again, this is kind of a longer term trade and this is similar to the natural gas situation. You've got some opportunities on the long side on the shorter term time frames, but the, the intermediate to longer term views here are definitely down. And these these blips on a long term basis are to be sold in my opinion. And there's a situation on, on the euro, but Relative to the dollar, we just need to glance at that really quick. Dollars coming off, obviously, you know, the, there was the weekly unemployment numbers that came out. Um, and again, this is, you know, was grinding higher off of this 93.67, but what do you do now? Here's the shorter term views, and we've broken down. Yesterday, we talked about some inflection points on the dollar in the short term. We blow this up so you can see it. 
9476. We've broken down below there. So right now, using the 240s as a, as a guidance tool, you got to be probably sitting on the sidelines on the shorter term time frames and uh, looking for new information to appear on the dailies, which, by the way, we've got this orange bar here, which is also in the scanner. And we want to probably wait patiently now until since we got the breakage on the 240s if you're using that as a guidance tool for new inflection points to appear on the daily and we we more than likely will have a new profile appear by tomorrow on the dollar and that'll give you some new uh, bearings on what's going to happen with that hopefully from a supply demand standpoint all right we're going to take a look at gold before we go to the break here because everybody's this thing has come unglued here and I'm looking at the April contract on gold. So the 1267 didn't hold, and we talked about getting stopped out of that long trade. To, and we play the odds. Here's the, you know, make 1300 top that we talked about target, and then come down and consolidate around this inflection point. Got a little bit too low, got to get stopped out. We talked about possibly picking a battle again on the 1234 area. That obviously has gone below. Uh, the realm of reality as far as uh, appropriate stops, if you will. <laughs> and right now, this is more than likely for me just a no trade. Um, took a shot, lose a little, lose a little, lose a little, make a lot on that scene. And uh, here's the new profile that's appeared on the weekly on the, on the on the April contract for gold. And now you've got this week, you've got the you know, 1234, 1238, now you've got to pay attention to that, 1234 being that daily and 1238 being the weekly. Now that's going to be the barrier of entry of, for longs again here. So this is it's kind of sit tight on gold. It's probably not a lot of leverage down here. There's not a lot of reasons to pick the bottle on the long side, but I'm not a big fan of going short this product. And there's my hate emails from Michelle Cabrera. Cabrera. Just got them in the inbox. All right. We're going to look at uh, corn because this is, you know, this is a situation. And I've been talking to the guys at the elevators because they always, you know, they call me religiously about the latest thing that they hear. And try not to let that sway my judgment too much, but they're, they're good sounding you know, boards for me to bounce technical ideas off of, and then they give their fundamental opinion. So 388 on corn. Um, again, we got to close above, and that reversed really quickly. That was very technically damaging for the longs on any breakouts. That was the first technical damage on corn in a long time. Um, but I feel like we could drift back down to 377. Uh, not a lot of risk in this trade. <laughs> Uh, and stops above 388 and a half up there. I, that's kind of, I, you know, I mean, I'm looking to risk, you know, four points to make 10 on this one. That's the way I'm looking at corn. We'll be right back, folks. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. 
Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using headed recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. We're looking at the 10-year. We're going to take a look at the 30-year. Um, we talked about some inflection points down below. Massive, you know, big support uh, between and waiting patiently until that happened uh, and those numbers 127 23 24 into 127 20 127 27 25 is that right yeah okay so uh, again those have been hit those are previous unfair highs and current unfair lows on the long term weekly and we talked about you know my opinion is this thing you know, from a long-term standpoint, again, pulling up the weekly, these are the, this is the 10 year treasury on a weekly time frame. that, um, <clears throat> you know, we still haven't, I mean, God, I mean, you know, if these are, <laughs> these interest rates are super low and, uh, all the things we talked about yesterday, the fundamental things that are out there and, you know, the, the fed, this, that, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, again, in my opinion, just like, you know, Tom's been saying, you know, we, we probably need to go even lower on rates. The globe is consider consistently spiraling into the zero rate format, except for the greases of the world. And um, you got to still keep turning the rents the same way when you got opportunities. So when we broke down, just a little review here, when we broke down and did, that didn't work out at 29.13, 129.13, that was a stop out situation for me. And then the next thing was to wait for another battle point, which actually happened. And uh, we reached the low this morning of 127, 27 and a half. And what is that? That's the 127, 27 and a half to the tick on the weekly. That doesn't normally work out to the tick. I'm just patting myself on the back a little bit for 
a change a very small amount of time that I do that. But uh, that was kind of, you know, that's a good view of dailies broke down, got to get stopped out, got to lose a little. And then when we get down to lower inflection points, you can try that again with a good reason uh, because the longer term, we don't have any divergences here and those are the situations that we love because we feel like the odds are in our favor and we had dual inflection points kind of giving us a neighborhood to be wrong there and if you look at this uh visually it doesn't look like to the tick but it it actually was to the tick on that inflection point and that new profile appearing this week really helped us out and by the way uh those numbers are sitting right here in the scanner if you don't have to have the, have the charts and listen to me every morning, if you want to turn down the volume and just focus on, there's the 10 year. And there's that 127 in decimal form, 0 0.8620, which is 27 and a half. And uh, here's the, you know, inflection points again, if you mouse over. Okay. All right, we're going to take one more look at the S&Ps here before we leave because everybody's kind of focusing on this. Did rattle around, and guess what we kind of went down into? We went down into this, you know, 2071, 2070 area. Uh, this doesn't have to hold up. This is our weekly and for highs. But, again, this is short, you know, kind of support that I don't know if it's going to hold. I think we're going to probably just gyrate around up here. Um, but again, the 2052, 2053 has been breached. We're trading 2072.50 right now. And uh, the inflection points to be aware of today are 2052, 53, and 2071, that general neighborhood. On the 240s, here we go. The move up recently has been regulated by these 240s quite nicely. There's a 2052 pullback. There's the 2058 70 240 pullback and uh here's our breath thanks very much guys steve rhodes is next stay tuned you'll enjoy it Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.